Hi friends, it's Reverend Laurie with Unity of Ocala for our Friday Love Notes. It's afternoon, it's actually after one. I had the pleasure of being downtown with a friend of mine and guess who was playing in the coffee shop while I was there? Tom, Tom Gray. And it was so lovely. It just felt like home hearing him play. His music is so nurturing and I needed that. So thank you, Tom. Um, anyway, so I mentioned on Sunday, Sunday before last, that brand new year, brand new opportunity to go a little deeper with our teachings and our understanding of unity. And so I'm dedicating time each month to go deeply into our principles, our founders' messages, um, the powers of man, talks on truth, discover the power within all these great authors and what it means to be a unitic, what it means to walk the unity walk, why it's important, how it benefits your life, what these principles mean. And then you can decide if you want to take them in deeply, make them part of who you are and experience life at the highest level you can achieve. So I've been wandering through some of my favorite old classic pocket books, these little books that you can almost fit in your pocket. This is Talks on Truth, Charles Fillmore. This is a reprint from... I'm sure the original, which was probably, well, there's only like four other of his books listed. So this was one of his early works. This, I don't even see a date on, but I'm sure it's not an original print. Might be, I don't know. Anyways, there is a Shakespeare quote at the beginning of chapter three, lesson three, there's no title for the lesson, so this is one of the originals. It's just Talks on Truth, Lesson 3, the I am in its kingdom. And I want you to hear this Shakespeare and listen closely to this because there are layers of meaning to this. This is something we're going to be talking about in depth in church, and then I'm going to be returning to Wednesday classes because uh, I'm graduating from tattoo school graduating from tattoo school that sounds so funny um the end of this month so wow lots happening this month the i am in its kingdom shakespeare wrote why man he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus and we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men at some time are masters of their fate. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. You may want to rewind and listen to that again because it's really deep. It powers me up. Charles Fillmore wrote, ideas are hinged. They swing in and they swing out. Not everyone has observed this, but everyone must observe it. And note also the swing of his particular ideas. See what he's saying? These ideas in our mind are constantly swinging in and swinging out. An idea that swings in has a mission. It is of spirit. And it has power to do far beyond an idea that swings out and dissipates its forces in the whirl of the periphery. In other words, God is constantly communicating with us in a language we can understand. Those thoughts, those emotions, those feelings, those ideas are sweeping in and sweeping in. It is of spirit and has the power to do far beyond an ideal idea that swings out, that we are putting out, that we are putting out. On the inner side, Ideas behold the great wisdom and attach themselves to it. 
that power within us grabs hold of this wisdom, attaches to it. Then they lose their identi identity as limited things and take on the unlimited. Constantly getting flooded with God thought, guidance, strength, power, pushing out, pushing out that strength, guidance, power. We can be the master of our fate. We can take hold of these principles. We can understand what's going on within us. We can let that God idea take root and sprout, depending on how we decide to think about it, think it through, produce it, nurture it. And we're going to talk about this more deeply on Sunday. A single idea born of wisdom is irresistible. We're going to start distinguishing those God thoughts between the things of the world, those swooping in, where they come in and where they lie. It's not just noises we hear off the radio and TV and voices, conversations. It's different. It's a different penetration. It's a different inlet. It's a different hinge. It's a different hinge. This is so exciting. No one can estimate the power for good that is in an idea generated in the center of the home of ideas in the inner man. It's going on bubbling in you right now. That hinge in the energy in your brain is open enough to let God pour through. When an idea comes from that great galaxy of supreme ideas, it goes forth in strength and harmony. It is a perfect sphere with no point liable to friction or collision. It is in whole, in its entirety. It's there. So how then do we manifest it? How then do we bring it forth into life? How then do we not let it get muddled with all of that other? Therein lies our wonderful work for the month of February, the month of divine love. <sighs> I'm just going to let spirit pick the perfect passage for us, susceptible to light. Irresistible music is our message. Oh, they're both good. Irresistible music. Put golden shoes on your prayers. Let your feet start tapping with hidden delight. Cut the middle out of your holy robes. <laughs> Let God catch a glimpse of midriff. That'll get him excited to see you finally loosening up. Invite the sway back into your hips. Your devotion is for naught if your soul doesn't move with this irresistible music. Are you dancing to the music of God? Put on your dancing slippers. <laughs> oh, we're going to have fun on Sunday. I miss you guys. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. God loves you. I love you. See you soon.